So nice to meet you, and thank you so much. I'm sorry for the the snafu, and but I got no, it. To no, no, my goodness, it actually worked out better for me time wise. So, <laughs> Good. so tell me what what can I tell you that would be the slightest bit interesting to you? Well, the the whole movie is really, especially when I found out it was a story. It's a true story based on you, which right away is interesting to me. Um, before yeah, where I, should I look? By the way, should I look? Should I look? At the green dot? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah, that, that's right. actually perfect. Okay. Yeah. Um, before we even get into, like, the lightning part of the story, um, Pluto seems like an amazing dog, and he kind of came into your life at a time where not everything was, like, idyllic, and there was maybe some, like, conflict in the family and stresses. Do you think it's, it's not a coincidence that this stray dog just, like, happened... Yeah, you know, um, you never know why things happen, when they happen, and how they happen. But I do know that our family was in crisis. Um, ironically, I had gone to L.A. to get into the movie business because I wanted to make movies for families, yeah. to help families, uplift families. And in the process of so doing, I let my own family slip. Um, I kind of got a little lost in the weeds and all the busyness and my marriage and my relationship with my kids really suffered. And, uh, and so I knew something needed to be done. My wife knew something needed to be done. Our kids knew something needed to be done. Our kids were praying. My wife was praying. I may or may not have been praying, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, but I actually, I actually made the suggestion to my wife one day that we should get a dog. I thought maybe a dog would help us uh, cope with all the stresses of our lives. And she just laughed and <laughs> laughed. She said, the last thing in the world I need is another mouth to feed. Uh, you know, forget it. I'm never going to get a dog on purpose. But then she kind of added a parenthetical. She said, you know, if a stray dog showed up, I'd consider it. But no way am I get a, do a dog on purpose. And it wasn't a couple weeks before a stray dog actually showed up followed our oldest son home from kindergarten and uh, kind of plopped down into our life and set about doing the things that dogs do, uh, you know, just um, playing ball with whoever needed to play ball, uh, wrestling with me at two in the morning when I came home late from work. <laughs> uh, and uh, so in, in our case, uh, Pluto was an angel. He was a dog. Uh, he was an angel in the form of a dog. And uh, whether God sent him or our prayers were answered or the universe just smiled on us, it was a happy day for him and us. Yeah, I mean, it's a very sweet moment in the film when he follows Christian home. And it's right at, it's pretty much after you have this, yeah, conversation with, in the film, Michelle, or the woman yeah. who plays Michelle is like, yeah, if a stray comes, like, you're not thinking that a stray dog would show up and then Pluto's, <laughs> Pluto's yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. You know, don't, don't open your mouth unless you're willing for the universe to answer. That's your, true. Uh, no, she, she said, she said, she said the, the longer form of the story is she said, you know, I read an article that said the best way to get a dog is if you get a stray because uh, you have no commitments. It's kind of like living together before you get married. You, yeah. <laughs> you just sort of try each other out, and, and there's no stress, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, so, so if a stray dog shows up, I'll think about it, um, and, you know, and the universe heard and answered. So we got us, we got us a stray. It was kind of cool. I mean, he showed up. He was awfully skinny and obviously been on his own for a while. And uh, so, you know, first we saved him. I mean, we fed him, we gave him water, we gave him love, and uh, we saved him, and then he saved us. I love at the end of the film, too, you have actual videos of the real Pluto. Yeah. Which yeah. are yeah. adorable. It's, it, and we actually didn't come across those videos until after we had finished making the movie. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we, we didn't know we had them, and our youngest son, who was... Uh, an associate producer on the film and actually who wrote the original oh, screenplay. Parker. Parker, yeah. I sent him, I just said, hey, look through all this footage and see if you find anything. And he said, Dad, Dad, you'll never believe what I found. And I'm I'm literally, you know, I'm, I'm behind the camera, so the camera's 
finding our oldest son, Christian, playing with Pluto, and I'm talking about this stray dog who came and found us, and it's perfect, perfect. So one of the big events, I mean, a pivotal <laughs> event in the film, and I watched it last night, I know it, I, it was just so charming and delightful, and I really enjoyed it, and great. such a great family film, and so I want to say congratulations, because you've definitely accomplished what you've wanted to do, is make a, a wonderful family film. But there is a point in the movie, and this really happened to you, where you you take your taking your uh, son Christian and some friends that you're trying to get him to know in the new neighborhood when you move camping, and you get struck by lightning. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. I've never. I don't think I've ever talked to anybody who's been like struck by lightning before, because it's just like such a crazy thing to happen. Yeah, well, it, put your finger on the screen and I'll, t I'll, I'll electrify you. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, it's a crazy thing to have experienced. Um, it's an overwhelming experience. Um, you know, physically, psychologically, and spiritually, it really shook me to the core. Um, by all accounts, I was dead for several minutes. I may or may not have been dead, but the boys say that I wasn't breathing. Uh, my eyes were open, but they were rolled back into my head. <clears throat> so all they could see was the whites of my eyes. There's a several minute period where I'm just kind of missing in action. I have no recollection of anything. The first thing I remember was starting to be able to hear. <clears throat> I could hear the boys inside the tent screaming and praying and um, uh, they were just frantic. I heard my son say, Dad, please don't die, don't die, Dad. Um, I heard one of the boys promise God he would never do another bad thing in his entire life if I would just oh, wake, wake up. up. Um, and, uh, but I couldn't do anything. I couldn't, I couldn't respond, I couldn't move. Um, I one of my eardrums had been blown out in the lightning strike, so I could barely hear them. It sounded like they were 50 yards away or so, but I sensed they were in trouble and they needed me and I couldn't do anything to help them. It was, it was, it was a traumatic time. That has to be so traumatic to hear your child in <laughs> distress and yeah, there's nothing you could do, but Look. Well, and it's not like we were in the backyard. I yeah, mean, we had you're... driven, we'd driven uh, two hours on paved roads and then almost an hour on four-wheel drive trails. Wow. And then we had hiked for a couple of hours. So we were way, way, way off the grid. And, uh, and it was the first backpacking trip for all three of these boys. So, um, you know, they were in trouble and they knew it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, I didn't provide a whole lot of comfort with the whites of my eyes staring at <laughs> Yeah. But, of course, luckily, thankfully, I'm here. You're, you're here. I'm yes, because this would be a very strange interview. <laughs> it's yeah, turned out yeah. different. But you're here. Um, and you made a, a great film about it. What do you... Um, what do you think is in the heart of the stray, like the heart of the movie that you want people to take away from after they see it? Well, I think um, I want people to know that angels take many forms. Sometimes an angel might be a stray dog. <clears throat> um, sometimes it might be um, the voice of God after you get struck by lightning and your, uh, your life is in jeopardy and you need faith that somehow you might recover and, and live on. Um, so angels take many forms, uh, but but uh, the universe is is kind and good in the end. And that's one thing. And I think the other thing I want people to take away is that families families are where it's at. Um, this movie depicts the craziest, uh, most dysfunctional time in my family's life. We were young. We didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have a lot of time. We had a lot of energy, thank goodness. But <laughs> you know, it all when you think about families, um, it all sort of happens at once in a family. At the very same time in a family's life, 
you have the most family stress, the most marital stress, <laughs> the most career stress, the most financial stress. It all kind of happens in this five to ten year period of young familyhood. It's true. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and that's what this movie de depicts. But making this movie and looking back on that time, it was clear to me and my wife that it was a beautiful time. I mean, it was hard. Yeah. But it was really beautiful at the same time. It was it was hard and beautiful. So families are where it's at. Um, and you know, it's easy to judge. It's it's almost cliche. I, that was one of the things I worried about with the movies, like. How many movies have you seen about a dad who's working too hard, who's never around, who misses his kids' ball games? I mean, who needs to see another one of those? <laughs> but i kind of been overwhelmed by the number of people who are like, thank you so much. It's like yeah. the first time they've ever heard that or seen that. Yeah. And I guess I realize it's just pretty universal. Um, you know, I wasn't an evil dude. I wasn't a terrible Not guy. Not yeah. I was working hard because I wanted to pay the mortgage and yeah. keep my kids clothed and fed. Um, but I was still working too hard. Yeah. And our family was still suffering. And we needed to hit the reset button. Nothing like a bolt of lightning uh, to, to do the, reset. the literal reset button. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I, I love that about this story. It is. It definitely depicts, I think, a, a family that many people could relate to like everyone's trying their best but you know still there's not time um but you come together at the end and you kind of um you mentioned it before but speaking of family you you wrote the screenplay with your son parker is that yeah. right so how was that experience <laughs> this was a this was a family story that kind of stayed in our family and lived in our family for many many years and uh, we didn't make a, a much publicity about it until two years ago. Our youngest son, who was the only child not living when these events actually occurred, he came to my, my wife and I and said, hey, I want to write a movie about Pluto and the lightning bolt. And we were like, what? <laughs> and we actually discouraged him, but he did not, like all good children, he disobeyed. <laughs> and... Uh, he, he wrote a script and delivered it to us a couple months later, and it was really good. And um, so it ended up that our youngest son, Parker, wrote the script, and he was an associate producer. I did some rewrites and directed and produced it. My wife, Michelle, was the associate producer. Okay. Our middle son, Marshall, was the editor and colorist. And our oldest son, Christian, composed the score. So it's kind of a movie about our family, from our family, for the planet. Which I love. Yeah, I noticed Chris, when I was at the end of the credits, it's like, oh, Christian did the music. That's so cool, because yeah. you just watched his story, and then like, oh, and he did the music for it. So I I love that aspect of it. Yeah. Um, and I do think, I, I just, I, I love Pluto. That I mean, Pluto, you fall in love with, and definitely, yeah. like, is an angel that came and was there when the family needed yeah. Needed him. Yeah. No, he really, he really, really was. I mean, what do you do when a dog shows up in your life? Well, yeah. you start to take walks. You start to take family walks. You start to go to the park. Um, you start to do things. And, and, and dogs have a way of kind of teaching you what's really important. I mean, what does a dog need to be happy? A dog needs a bowl of water, a bowl of food, and an occasional scratch on the yeah. head <laughs> or the belly, even better. You know, that's it. That's it. And meanwhile, we're like whirling dervishes trying to, yeah. you know, pay down our credit cards or whatever, um, stressing about this, that, and the other. And Pluto just kind of plopped down and, and made it clear to us that, uh, you know, things – the things that matter most are not things, they're people, they're relationships, they're, they're families. Yeah. It's true. At the end of the day, I mean, that's, that's what matters is people. And yeah, yeah. It's, I think, a good lesson for all of us to, I mean, especially today, I mean, everything is, everyone's stressed and there's always, there's so much going on, but it's always good to kind of step back and be, and look at the people important in your life. And I think this film helps 
do that and like realize like oh, I'm lucky to have my family and my friends and the people yeah. that actually matter. Yeah. And other little things yeah. they take will take care of themselves. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they really will. And and you know, that's not to say that stresses aren't real. Yeah. That we shouldn't no, we shouldn't have any stress. I mean that's unrealistic. Yeah. Um but yeah, that's one of the reasons I think family movies are kind of cool. And we have some family movies in the movie at the end of the movie, as you mentioned. Yeah, which I love. Um, <laughs> you know, the family movies, they, they show the moments when you're at the park, when you're shooting off rockets, when you're when you're uh, opening Christmas presents. They don't show the moments when you're in the store at midnight trying to buy the gift you forgot or yes. whatever. I mean, <laughs> uh, but, 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 yeah, it, it's all worth it. It's all worth it, and uh, yeah, fa families are where it's at. Well, I'm excited for the story to come out because I definitely think it is a great family film. Because not only will you could definitely bring your kids to it, but it's a movie that adults will get a lot of enjoyment and take something from, which is hard to do sometimes. I mean, you, there's I have a little niece and nephew at some of the kid movies, you know. You take you take the kids too, but it's not really always for the adult. Yeah, like okay, it's an hour and a half yet, but yeah, this is yeah. really one of those movies where everyone's gonna take something away from, which is beautiful thing at the end of the day. I think. I'm really glad you said that. We we have had a number of people tell us, you know, this is a three generation movie. I yeah. mean, kids and parents and grandparents all can relate to different aspects of the story. 